Wow, some incredible work over there. Okay, hello and welcome to the State of Unreal 2024. Before, before I jump in, you may be wondering why it's me up here kicking things off instead of Tim Sweeney, as he's done for the past decade. That's because he's down in Australia fighting the good fight for all developers. What we're fighting for is a big part of why we're here today. It's about opening the market so that you can, make, can have a fair deal with, when you build and distribute your games on any platform. We have a fantastic show in store for you today, celebrating exciting new features for Unreal Engine 5.4, as well as a lot of cool updates for UEFN and the Epic Games Store. So over the years, this show has become less and less about us and more and more about you, the Unreal Engine community. Um, so today, we'll also be hearing from a bunch of awesome developers that are making kick-ass games in Unreal and our other, our, our other offerings. Since last year, there's been quite a bit of activity in the Unreal ecosystem, and the most recent news is from the world of animation. The short film, War Is Over, directed by Dave Mullins and produced by Brad Booker, won an Academy Award for the Best Animated Short. <laughs> the film was inspired by the music of John Lennon and Yoko Ono, and was created all in Unreal Engine by our great friends and longtime collaborators at Weta FX. Over the years, we've worked closely with Peter Jackson's team at Weta, and the relationship has pushed the engine to do things that you've all benefited from. And now the work in UE has really paid off with an Oscar. Congratulations to the entire team, a couple of who are, I'm sure, they're in the audience somewhere here. Okay. Okay. Many of you are leveraging the full stack of offerings from Epic, uh, from tools and content to services and distribution. We're always working to improve our ecosystem for everyone, regardless of whether you're developing with UE or even another engine. And through UEFN, we're also helping to connect you to a massively engaged audience where you can make real money when players engage with what you've built. And when it comes to Unreal, our engine is your engine. And we've been pushing the envelope with what can be done using UE through shipping features and games with inside Fortnite. Every product we make is battle tested to the limit by us, and we strive to make an engine that helps teams of every size succeed. And with source code easily available, you have no hidden barrier holding you back. Because our engine truly is your engine, we also want to thank you, the community of developers, for pushing great code back into Unreal, um, either directly or indirectly through the marketplace, making the engine better for all of us. We make the core engine. You make it Unreal. OK, are you ready to see something really is truly Unreal? OK, all right. Let's roll it. They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you too, they will take you to their headquarters and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises. Before the Germans, before that American. The eye of force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful. Stand was on me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stand aside! I do not take orders from anyone! 
I don't have time for this. Neither do I. Amazingly cool. Okay, do you want to hear some more about that? Um, it's my okay, great. It's my pleasure to introduce one of the greatest storytellers in video games, my good friend Amy Hennig. Amy, come on out. It's awesome to see you here. Thank you, Kim. Uh, and look, we are so excited to finally show what we've been working on at Skydance New Media. Um, and I just got to say, I am so proud of what the team has accomplished. My God. It's incredible. Right? Right. Um, Amy, I'm sure the audience is wanting to know more about your game sure. and the team. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Well, I, as the trailer hopefully illustrates, uh, we are creating a story-driven World War II era Marvel action adventure game with an ensemble of playable heroes. But Here's what's important to note, because mm -hmm. people might not think this. This isn't some custom demo that we made just for this show. That's our game. That is your right? game. Right? All the sequences you just saw in that trailer are all pulled right out of our game, running real time in Unreal Engine 5, no smoke and mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> I'd expect nothing less from your team. It's <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, as with many of your past projects, you're really bridging the gap between films and games. But this is a whole new level. What's different nowadays compared to the old days? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you and I have known each other for what? Over a decade over now? Over a decade, yeah. Right. And we immediately hit it off. And I think it's because we've been chasing the same dream, right? True. Yes. Which is to create richly interactive experiences that are cinematic, immersive, but, and, and make you feel like you're in a movie, but with all the player agency that you expect from a really great game, right? Absolutely. And in the past, this has always felt like it was just beyond our grasp. But I think we're finally crossing that threshold. Yeah, we're trying our best. Yes, we're trying our best, yeah. And look, when we're telling a character-driven story, it's critical for us to be able to really faithfully capture and honor every nuance of our actors' stellar performances. So we've been incredibly grateful to be able to partner closely with our friends on the MetaHuman team to tell our story. Tell us a little bit about the visuals in the game. Well, again, thanks to Epic and the Unreal Engine development team, we've been able to leverage some of the new Nanite and Lumen features being released in the 5.4. And honestly, this is really helping our, our team to achieve a level of visual fidelity that enables us to present this authentically grounded Marvel universe. Okay. You know. All right. Well, let's go a little bit deeper and see some of these features that the team has used by firing up a level in the game. So, <laughs> so let's so, that. Sounds good. Okay. First, I'd like to introduce two of my colleagues. Colin Hennen, our Cinematic Animation Director. Yay! And Roman Adiola, our Director of Photography. Yay! So Colin will be live and editor, and Roman will be on the virtual camera, just like he is at all of our performance capture shoots. So, if you all are ready, let's switch the feed and go back to that bridge environment. And let's see, yep, you're live, good, okay. So Colin, let's boom down and take a closer look at this environment. So to create a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So, Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, 
the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles. Let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, let's get Colin to show the magic, and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail, but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural <laughs> effects, if you such want, so would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get details in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. Let's switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. And Colin, while we do, can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. OK, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects. Right? And of course, we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly, actually. Yeah, actually, it's a little cold up here. Or maybe it's just um, <laughs> And remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call a heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites. But that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. You can run the simulation, the, the smoke simulation, in Unreal Engine natively if you want. Or you can import open VDB data sets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all running in real time that total, are totally responsible to responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. So you can see Cap's leather uniform fits just like you would expect in real life with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But none of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather and our Black Panther, into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain. 
America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. Right, and as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the metahuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actors' performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it all starts with the actor's talent, and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Morline, who plays Captain America. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and, uh, and Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug, they're friends. They're not really fighting. It's, it's all good. And of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful cast for going on this incredibly crazy journey with us. Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, this is running entirely in real time. Awesome. That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are. Captain, America's hero. Dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. An engine and just to show there's no cheating going on. Hey, Colin, can you show the editor and the sequence of timelines? <laughs> right. So it really is running on real engine. We don't we don't cheat. Yeah. So absolutely incredible. I've never seen performances in a video game that are so believable. The storytelling, the action, I can't wait. It's gonna be yeah. so good to play. Anyway, Amy, Colin, Roman. Yes. Thank you so much for showing your game. Thank you. Thank we you. Can't everybody. wait for it to ship. Yes. <laughs> okay. We better we'll get, get on with get the show. Get back to work, right? Yeah. yeah back right. to work. Bye, back to work. <laughs> All right, so um, to get more information on what you've just seen here, there'll be a tech talk at 12.30 p.m. in this room uh, to go over all the fine details. Now, to get more detail on the, uh, into the, on the exciting new features of Unreal Engine 5.4, I'd like to bring to the stage our Vice President of Engineering, my good friend, Simon Tourangeau. Come on, Simon. Take it away, brother. Hi, everyone. It's been a busy year since the last GDC. Back in October, we shipped UE 5.3. Then, in December, we launched Fortnite Chapter 5 along with LEGO Fortnite, Rocket Racing, and Festival in our Big Bang event. And now, we're about to ship UE 5.4. Everything we shipped over last year has made UE a better engine for you and the entire community of Unreal developers. So let's take a look at what's coming. On the rendering side, we just saw some of the beautiful scenes in the Skydance demo. They showed what can be achieved with nanite tessellation. There were also nice volumetric effects using our heterogeneous volume feature. In 5.4, you'll also get other features like local fog volumes and Niagara lightweight emitters, just to name a few. But most importantly, we've made a lot of performance improvements. We now have faster lumen, shadows, and ray tracing. We've added variable rate shading for Nanite, 
We massively improved instance calling, and we significantly improved parallelism in the renderer. You name it, we made it faster. With a city sample demo that shipped in 5.0, our console test showed that the render thread time was reduced by 50%, and the GPU time decreased by 25%. Now, let's talk about animation. Over the past year, our team has been hard at work on a world-class update to our animation systems, and I'm happy to share that our motion matching technology is now production ready. Motion matching is a simple yet powerful way to animate characters in games. Instead of handcrafted state machines, motion matching continuously selects the best frame of animation to play from its motion database. It aims to closely match the current pose of the character as well as its past and future movement. Our implementation scales with the size of your data set to reach the high fidelity you need, and it uses pose warping algorithms to fill in the gaps. But motion matching is a tool for more than just locomotion. As you can see here, it's used for jumping, falling, and complex for traversal. We use 3D trajectory prediction to produce seamless transitions with anticipation and long follow throughs. And this results in much more believable animation. We've also built world-class authoring and debugging tools, like the Rewind Debugger, that allows you to record, inspect, and edit your motion databases to understand and improve your transitions. The motion matching system has been battle-tested and is ready for prime time. It has been in use in Fortnite since the launch of Chapter 5 in December, running on all characters on all platforms. And to help you get started, we will be releasing a sample project based on what you've seen today. This project will include over 500 AAA animations created from high-end motion capture data with the locomotion and traversal data set used in this demo. Best of all, it will be free for all Unreal Engine developers and compatible with the MetaHuman rig. <laughs> now, a lot about creating a game is about telling a story. To bring their ideas and visions to life, storytellers must iterate constantly and efficiently. They must be able to get the right animation, the right camera angle, and the perfect lighting that completes the scene. We've been investing in our animation authoring tools with Control Rig and Sequencer, and we've now reached a very important milestone. For the first time, a full game production, LEGO Fortnite, was rigged and animated entirely in engine with no external DCC used. And so far, we've produced over 240 minutes of animation for LEGO Fortnite across gameplay, emotes, cinematics, and trailers. Working entirely in Unreal Engine means there is no round tripping with an external DCC, no exporting. Being able to see everything in context, lighting, camera, animation, Iterating and making changes in real time with final pixels is a real game changer. But our animators always tell us that behind every great animation is a great rig. In Unreal Engine 5.4, creating rigs becomes much quicker and easier than before with modular control rigs. Creators also have the ability to author skeletons and skin weights and take advantage of our new suite of deformers to help achieve fundamental rig features such as squash and stretch. These tools have changed the way we bring our stories to life, and we're excited to share them with you. With games getting bigger with more complex content, developer iteration will always be top of mind. We've significantly improved C++ completion times with the help of our new Unreal Build Accelerator for highly performant distributed code builds. On our build farm, we now see that Unreal Editor compiles two to three times faster. You'll also be happy to hear that we compile far fewer shaders in the editor as well as during cooks. <laughs> And finally, we improved the onboarding process for Unreal Cloud DDC for large distributed teams. We've been quite busy on the audio front, too. MetaSounds was the foundation for audio in all our new experiences. We had granular synthesized vehicles in rocket racing, a simple accurate weapon overall in Battle Royale, dynamic ambience and music in LEGO Fortnite, 
Rhythm Games and Festival and Jam. And 3D user created music in UEFN Patchwork. And to help sound designers understand, debug, and create powerful next-gen audio, we're shipping a new experimental audio profiling tool called Audio Insights. If you're a sound designer and want to make something truly unique and immersive, Meta Sounds is the right tool for you. <laughs> now, let's talk about our procedural content generation framework, which we released as experimental last year. With PCG, artists can build vast worlds efficiently in a completely art-directable way. Using a node graph to set up parameterized rule sets, you can create fast, iterative, and deterministic procedural content, even at runtime. For 5.4, we added new features such as runtime hierarchical generation, attribute set tables, feedback loops, and the list goes on. We use the PCG framework in our internal production, including LEGO Fortnite. In fact, the team developed their own world creation system using PCG to craft their massive environments. Their system generates a vast amount of unique tiles, which are then assembled on the fly to compose a unique world for each player to experience. Our learnings translate into new ways for you to use a framework, develop new tools, and create your own gameplay opportunities. To get you started, we are also releasing a PCG Biome creation plugin as a concrete example of a flexible, data-driven tool with a built, uh, built with a systemic approach featuring the latest improvement. So, so we're happy to announce that the PCG framework is going better with UE54 and planning to be production ready by GDC 2025. Speaking of LEGO Fortnite, the game has been an amazing opportunity to battle test and improve some of our features. Chaos Physics was heavily optimized to support large-scale building and destruction with a new prediction model to create fewer and smoother corrections for physics objects. It's worth noting that the multiplayer physics sandbox runs server-side and therefore provides coherent and performance simulation on all platforms. Our data-oriented programming framework called MASS was put to the test to simulate and hold more than 6 million lightweight actors. And finally, we optimize the engine storage, memory usage, and perfs, resulting in LEGO Fortnite working great across all platforms, including mobile. With all of this work, Unreal Engine is now even better for your own ambitious cross-platform projects. I hope you enjoyed this short glimpse of all the cool things our teams have been working on. I invite you all to check out Preview 1 of Unreal Engine 5.4 available today, with the full release coming in a month or so. To get a deeper dive into our animation updates, join us for our tech talk later this afternoon, and check out our talks at our learning theater in our booth over at Moscone. And as always, you can visit our roadmap to learn more about the future of Unreal Engine. Enjoy the rest of the show, and please welcome Dana Cowley. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be back at GDC to show you what a few more of our partners are working on this year. Now, from AAA to independent teams, Unreal developers are building loads of highly anticipated games. You're telling new stories. You're tr translating creative IP across platforms. And you're bringing the worlds of interactive entertainment and cinema closer together than ever before. And speaking of movies, we are excited to share that Studios have used Unreal Engine to deliver more than 800 films and television shows to date. And that's a 45% increase in the number of productions from last year. And it goes to show just how fast this community in media and entertainment is growing. And now, get ready to experience some of the magic being brought to the Dune universe through the open world survival game, Dune Awakening. Please welcome Joel Bylos from Funcom. Thank you, Dana. Ever since the first time I read June, I was fascinated by the exotic universe that Frank Herbert had created. And then came the movies from Legendary, Warner Brothers, and Denis Villeneuve, who brought June to the screen in the most epic way imaginable. So, when Funcom had the opportunity to turn June into an open world survival MMO, we were extremely excited and a little bit nervous. 
The challenge of recreating the universe of Dune is vast. Our team embraced the idea of using brutalist architecture against the flowing desert landscape to create a world that dwarfs and swallows the player. Fortunately for us, we've been working with Legendary right from the beginning. We got to walk around the sets that they had built for the movie to see how it felt to be transported into the world of Arrakis. And our concept team used this knowledge to help inspire the visual language of the game. And we were very grateful to work with Greg Frazier, the visionary who won the Oscar for cinematography on Dune Part 1. Greg is an artist with light, a master of visual tone, and his vision for Arrakis has greatly shaped our world. Let's have a look. When I saw the complexity that Dune 2 was going to have from its pre-production perspective and from its planning perspective, I realized that being able to use Unreal Engine, being able to have control over light staging all in pre-production was only ever going to speed up the process. A large part of what we used Unreal for was to pre-plan the shots that we were trying to achieve so that we were able to then put metahuman characters into the location to pre-plan when the shadow was going to reveal them, when the shadow was going to be off them. So using Unreal in pre-production was a godsend. The guys the making the Dune Awakening game have been quite inspired by the world that we had built in Dune Part 1. And they've built a world which continues the world that we built on film and actually probably even expands upon it and builds a world that's greater than the film that we've made. And what excites me going forward in the future is that you know, you've got gaming on this side and film on this side, and they've been very separated up until now. But slowly they're coming together, and I think right now we're at a point where they're literally crossing over. And I think the skills from gaming technology and the skills from filmmakers are going to cross-pollinate and become useful for each other. So, from book to film to game, we needed to take the leap from authored story to player-driven sandbox and create the possibility spaces for our world. We needed to build a world of discovery, exploration, and survival. And for this, we turned to Unreal Engine. It comes with the flexibility of the blueprint system so we can set up those sandbox interactions. It provides a world-leading renderer for amazing visuals, and thanks to Nanite, we can use high-poly models at all distances, making the landscape something truly epic to behold. To build our world, we use Houdini with Unreal to generate landscapes with a non-destructive workflow that allows our level designers to sculpt and regenerate without causing issues. And for June, we knew that our sand had to be world-class. Using Unreal plugins such as Fluid Ninja, we were able to build sand displacement technology that reacts to small details like footprints from a player's walk or run. And finally, Lumen provides a lighting system that combines global illumination and bounce lighting to make both our exteriors and our interiors look truly stunning. For us, working with the Unreal Engine toolset, collaborating with our partners at Legendary, and working in the universe that was created by Frank Herbert and brought to life by Denis Villeneuve has been truly inspirational and exciting, and a lot of hard work as well. Humans have always had this drive to create, to build worlds, whether in text, on screens, or in games. As a company, we've been on this journey for a long time, crafting open worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. So with that, we're very excited to share our latest trailer with you. Thank you very much for listening. Let's take a look.
Thank you, Joel, for showing us this beautiful exploration of Arrakis and for giving us a glimpse into what's coming soon. Continuing with the theme of game developers creating new worlds that are faithful to the stories that fans love, Zynga's Natural Motion Games is expanding one of the most popular galaxies in entertainment, and they are here to give us a new look at Star Wars Hunters. Please welcome Rich Kemp to the stage. Thank you, Dana. Hello and good morning. Um, as senior art director at Zynga's Natural Motion Games, I have the privilege of working on Star Wars Hunters with the rest of our amazing team. And I'm excited to talk to you about our upcoming cross-platform arena shooter. In our game, players will face off in 4v4 multiplayer battles, selecting from a roster of brand new characters to fight in battlefields inspired by iconic Star Wars locations. Hunters squad up and head into battle against the competition, both friendly and fierce. Our vision for this game is to create new and authentic expressions of Star Wars characters based on iconic archetypes familiar to fans, but with an all-new twist. Set on a new planet called Vespara, fans from across the galaxy take their seats in one of our many arenas to see the hunters fight in thrilling matches and cheer on their heroes up close and personal. Today, we're going to focus on some specifics around mobile development and the opportunities that using Unreal Engine has opened up for us. This is Reeve, one of our most iconic and popular hunters from our soft launch. It took a lot of work to create this lightsaber-wielding dark side assassin you see before you, starting with us collaborating closely with our colleagues at Lucasfilms on ways we can create something grounded in the Star Wars galaxy while still keeping the sense of larger-than-life personality that is unique to our game. We wanted each hunter to have their own unique playstyle and character, so rapid iteration was critical. Using Unreal's animation features, coupled with our character creation tool, we found efficiencies in prototyping by reusing animations from hunter to hunter and identifying gaps that we could fill with simple animations created within Unreal itself. Using Unreal's multiple pie views and networking modes allowed us to test and tweak multiplayer abilities rapidly, which supports us in achieving great gameplay experiences across all of our maps and modes. In particular, the option to control one view with mouse and keyboard and another with controller means two people can play in one machine at once and then tweak the gameplay in real time. This is very useful for understanding not only how it feels to use a weapon or ability, but also how it feels to have it used on you. And this is particularly important to nail an ability like Reeve's Vicious Leap, where the player needs to feel powerful, but also in control. Unreal has been a great asset in helping us build and deliver a game that looks great and is an authentic addition to the Star Wars universe. We recently revamped our lighting, making full use of Unreal's best-in-class lighting tools. And this has significantly enhanced our visuals. This upgrade delivers a broad spectrum of vivid colors and realistic material interactions with scalable performance across all of our platforms. Unreal Engine's dynamic tools have played a pivotal role in infusing our cosmetics with character without the need for extra animations. This secondary movement in the scene further brings our world to life and is particularly impactful on smaller screens. And by incorporating HDR cube maps, we've heightened the richness and vibrancy of our materials across all of our characters and environments. Unreal Engine 5's advanced post-processing and cinematic features have enabled us to seamlessly create marketing assets from the newer version of the engine. We're incredibly proud of how, with the help of Unreal, we were able to craft this high-quality cross-platform experience, both in terms of gameplay and visual fidelity on all of our platforms. We can't wait for you to play it on iOS, Android, and Nintendo Switch soon. Thank you, and see you in the arena. Thanks, Rich. The game looks awesome, and we cannot wait to play it. You know, another thing we love to see is developers building brand new IP from the ground up. And we've long admired the work of our talented developer friends in Korea who are always pushing the state of the art of massively multiplayer games. Chrono Odyssey is no exception, and it has captured the attention of players at a global scale. So let's hear some more from Bongun Bay, the CEO of Chrono Studio. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. 안녕하세요. 크로노 스튜디오의 배봉건입니다. 
저희 대표 게임인 크로노 오디세이 진행을 상황을 공유 드리게 되어 매우 기쁩니다. Hello everyone, this is Bong Gonbae from Chrono Studio. Today, we're excited to share the progress of our flagship title, Chrono Odyssey. Chrono Odyssey는 시공간까지 조작할 수 있는 MMORPG를 목표로 2021년부터 시작하여 지금까지 120명의 최고의 개발자들과 오픈월드 MMORPG를 만들기 위해 노력하고 있습니다. 세테라의 광활한 오픈월드, 액션, 모험, 성장, 제작을 게이머 분들께서 즐길 수 있도록 노력하고 있습니다. Since 2021, we've been focused on creating an MMORPG that manipulates space and time. With our team of nearly 120 top-tier developers, it has expanded into an open-world action MMORPG where gamers can enjoy action, adventure, growth, and item crafting in our vast open world. In this open world, players will have to manipulate their environments by traveling between past, present, and future worlds to save Satera. 6개의 클래스 18개의 웹폰을 활용한 특징적인 전투뿐만 아니라 시공간 활용, 시공간을 활용한 액션의 재미를 곁들여 제, 자유로운 전투의 재미를 구현하였습니다. In Satera, there are six distinct combat classes and 18 weapons. All classes can manipulate space and time, giving players a unique battle experience. Players can travel through space and go to designated time zones to gain advantage during thrilling battles. 데이터 레이어 기능을 사용하여 로딩 없이 실시간으로 변하는 과거, 현재, 미래의 세테라 월드를 구현하였고 이를 통해 게이머 분들께서는 자유로운 시공간 탐험을 재미를 느낄 수 있습니다. We've used data layers to create real-time environments and layer them on top of one another to enable players to travel through past, present, and future, Ceter future states of the Cetera landscape seamlessly. Players can gain additional resources through traveling to the past and fight against stronger enemies in the future. In this instance, we're traveling from the present to the future. 월드 파티션 기능을 사용하여 12제곱 킬로미터 이상의 랜드스케이프 약 50만 개의 액터를 구현하였고 이를 통해 게이머 분들은 친구들과 함께 자유로운 월드 탐험의 재미를 느낄 수 있습니다. World partition allows us to efficiently create a massive open world exceeding 12 square kilometers with about a half million actors and then stream it smoothly to enhance the cinematic look and feel of the environment, all while allowing for multiplayer adventures. 극도로 자유로운 커스터마이징 기능을 통해 수많은 유저가 자신의 개성을 표현하며 게임을 즐길 수 있도록 구현하였습니다. And finally, through our extremely flexible customization system, players can freely express their personality by creating their character, ensuring that each character you meet in Satera is as unique as your own. 이 자리에서 처음으로 공개하는 크로노 오디세이의 새로운 트레일러 영상을 함께 즐겨 주세요. Now, we are excited to show you our brand new trailer for Chrono Odyssey. Please enjoy. Odyssey looks incredible, and we couldn't be happier to announce that it is coming to the Epic Games Store, and you can wishlist it right now. 
So here to talk about more what's next for the store is Steve Allison. Uh, holy, that game looks amazing. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, when you succeed, we succeed. This is a mantra that we use across Epic that highlights our commitment to developer success. And this is what it's all about for us across Unreal Engine, UEFN, Epic Online Services, and the Epic Game Store. I'm Steve Allison, and I'm here to give you an update on EGS and what we're doing for developers. The Epic Game Store reaches a huge global audience that continues to grow and should be considered essential in the launch plans of every game coming to PC. Let's take a look at where we're at. We ended 2023 with 270 million PC accounts, peak monthly active users of 75 million, and player spending of over $950 million. We have great programs for our players, like our free games program and Epic Rewards. Last year, our users had the opportunity to claim 80 games worth over $2,000 that were free to keep forever. And Epic Rewards is a first-of-its-kind PC store loyalty program that gives users 5% back on all eligible purchases. Players can use their Epic Rewards at their discretion on future purchases, and this means they have more spending power to buy your content. But since we're at GDC, I want to focus on how we're maximizing developer success. We launched the Epic Game Store in 2018 with an industry-leading 88-12 revenue share, with 88% of all revenue going back to developers on every sale. Recently, we've added more opportunities to increase developer revenue share. On games with in-app purchases, you have the option to use your own payment processing services and take 100% of the revenue for all those transactions. This past October, we launched two new opt-in programs that give developers additional ways to maximize their financial success and take home 100% of net revenue during the first six months after their game or app's release. Epic First Run is an ongoing opt-in exclusivity program for new releases, and now on Epic is a limited time back catalog incentive program. The combination of our base 8812 revenue share plus these new programs give you a menu to build go-to-market strategies that can maximize your financial results. And don't forget, Unreal Engine developers with royalty-based agreements pay no Unreal Engine royalties on all sales made on the Epic Games Store. Kim mentioned earlier that Epic was fighting the good fight on behalf of all of us, and let's talk about that for a second. For the past few years, Epic has tirelessly been fighting gatekeepers on mobile platforms to allow for distribution that is more fair, more open, and built for how we need to run our businesses today. And this battle is not over yet. However, we have made enough progress, and I am here today to make an announcement that we're super pumped about, and that is that we are hard at work on the Epic Game Store for mobile, targeting to launch on iOS and Android by the end of this year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we're excited to be leading the charge in bringing Fortnite back to mobile, along with a selection of third-party partners who have expressed interest in joining us when we launch. With our expansion into mobile platforms, EGS will become the first ever game-focused, multi-platform store that will work across Android, iOS, PC, and Mac, anchored by our players' Epic accounts. Everything I talked about today, both player and developer programs, will be available when the mobile stores expand, and that will also launch with self-publishing tools that will make it easy for our mobile developers to release their apps. To learn more about our plans for EGS, we invite you to join us this afternoon at 3.30 over at Moscone. And now to share some incredible UFN updates, here's Sax Person. Fortnite has had an incredible year this year, and you were a critical part of that. This time last year, we launched Unreal Editor for Fortnite and the new creator economy to fuel investment and development in the Fortnite ecosystem. And today, we have lots more to share about what's next. Since we launched the UEFN beta, we've released countless features, and you have built and published more than 80,000 incredible experiences that have been played by more than 130 million players. Let's take a look at some highlights from the islands published with UEFN.
the breadth and depth what you've been able to make in UAPN continues to amaze us. Like every day feels like Christmas, like when we go in and see what people are publishing. And your amazing work has already resulted in more than $320 million paid out since we launched UAPN and Creator Economy 2.0. There's no secret path to success when you publish a game in Fortnite. You make a game, players play it, and you get paid. But we're not here to talk about what's already happened. Instead, let's take a look at some of the highlights of what's new in UEFN for 2024. So with recently released features, you can now design top-down gameplay, side-scrollers, and more. Try out the fixed-point camera, fixed-angle camera, and third-person camera devices all for yourself. And later this year, we're happy to finally announce that we're going to release the highly requested first-person camera. It took a while, we know. And we're making more IP from Epic's portfolio widely available for using creator-made experiences. I'm here to share that we'll be adding Fall Guys assets, animations, and of course, lovely Fall Guys beans to UEFN in May, so you can build your own frantic obstacle courses right inside Fortnite. And also starting today, we're releasing rocket racing templates and devices for you to build your own race tracks using the same track designs we use to build rocket racing. So for the next stage of Fortnite, and ultimately the open metaverse that Epic is building towards, we need tools to solve for interoperability, scalability, and resilience. That is what led us to develop Verse, a powerful programming language that we released last year. And since we introduced Verse, we've added loads of new features, persistence, runtime error telemetry, incremental garbage collection, and we're continuing to move as fast as we can. And on top of that, this year we're introducing that we are building a scene graph system built right on top of the Verse language. It's an entity and component framework that enables you to dynamically manipulate objects in your game. The system is designed to be simple, easy to learn, and eventually powerful enough to build AAA game content. And an important point about the scene graph is that while it's coming first to UEFN, it will eventually become the foundation for all content built in the OVL engine. We're starting with an ex experimental version launching in the next couple of months with the goal of scene graph being available to all creators in UEFN by the end of the summer. If you want to learn more, we have a scene graph talk tomorrow at 4 p.m. over at the Moscone. So next, and this year we're also going to be enabling physically simulated characters in UEFN and creative, and the ability to dynamically simulate any static mesh. So this is basically the LEGO Fortnite physics and destruction system that we worked really hard on that now are being released broadly for all creators. We're super excited about the potential of true networked physics sandbox gameplay to enable creators to make interactive and emerging games that were previously not possible in Fortnite. So beyond the, techni the technical capabilities of the tools, just as important as making your game is finding your game. We saw new islands published in Fortnite go from 50 islands a day to well over 500 brand new experiences published every single day in Fortnite. So in, in discoverability is a key focus of ours. The goal is to give every island a chance to find an audience. We've already done a lot over the last year to improve Discover, and now we're going to be adding features and functionality specifically to the creator pages, including ability to follow creators, link out to social media platforms, and make it much, much easier for you to build your own distinct creator community. So we've talked a lot about what's coming to UEM in 2024. There's a much deeper roadmap talk tomorrow that I encourage you to go and see in Moscone. But let's talk a bit about like, what are we doing next for our first party development here at Epic. So we've always used our own games to push the engine forward, make sure it's battle tested for creators. And it's time for Fortnite development to move over to UEFN and Verse. By the end of 2025, we are going to ship our first season of Fortnite Battle Royale developed in UEFN. So by moving our primary development to UEFN and Verse, our aim is to accelerate feature development and ultimately result in a much more robust toolset for all developers faster. And what it means to everybody that, that chooses to, to use UEFN is that this is us ensuring that you're going to be able to build experiences at the level and depth and quality of Battle Royale going forward right inside Fortnite. So there's a lot more coming for creators in 2024. And some of those features are much better shown in person and in a live demo than me just talking about them. So why don't we welcome Pat and Michael to the stage, and they can show you more. Hey, everyone. All right, thank you, Sax. 
You mentioned the evolution of UBFN, and now we'd like to share a project that we've been using to drive that progress. Hey, Michael. Hi, everybody. Here we are running live in UEFN, and Michael's playing for us. We're surrounded by just a handful of the prefab buildings and props you can find in the content folder of every project. But if you can't find the exact theme or the art style that you're after, you're going to need to customize. For example, what if you wanted to make a game set on a classic 1970s style sci-fi spaceship? Let's step into this rift and show you what can happen. Welcome to the Talisman, a deep space cargo vessel. We built this ship to show you how unique your world can look when you create high quality custom assets and bring them into your UEFN experience. Hey Michael. Yeah. Can we get Bright Bomber back? We still need a player to help us look around. I think she should be dropping in soon. Oof, okay. Maybe not the most elegant entrance ever, but she made it. And now we can start to explore the ship. Straight away, we're switching off the Fortnite HUD with the HUD controller device so we can show you more of our environment. As Sax mentioned earlier, cameras are also one of the things that can be customized in UEFN. For example, with the new Orbit camera device, we can push way in, past the player entirely. Let's use this camera to explore the crew quarters. All right, this view allows you to focus more on what the player's looking at, and it's helpful if you're interested in making more narrative style games. All right, how about we compromise and back out halfway so we can see more of our player again? All right, great. Now we're moving across the hall to the common room in the galley. I'm excited for you to see the complexity of lighting in these rooms. We're optimizing for lumen by selectively disabling shadows, reducing light overlap, and swapping in light functions for geometry shadows. Customizing the look and feel of your UEFN game is going to be a consistent theme in 2024 and beyond. Combining release devices and verse code as we are here gives you the control and the freedom to make your experience unique. That verse code you just saw actually has to do with assigning our player a quest. We're going to trigger it using several standard devices. But instead of going back to the Fortnite UI, we've styled the pop-up messages and the maps to fit our sci-fi experience. All right, you'll notice there's a waypoint on the map for us now. So we've got a mission to find our crew, so let's get moving. It's worth noting, even though we're showcasing a tremendous amount of detail inside the ship, the total environment still checks in under 200 megs. It's incredible that you can get this level of visual detail in that size profile. And to achieve this, we're relying on a combination of mid-poly kit bash parts, fully procedural materials, and mesh decal. With efficient build techniques, you can make big games fit into small packages. All right, according to our mini-map, our objective is waiting for us on the other side of that door over there. Let's go check it out. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you, and we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. That's right. Metahumans are now available for import into UFN as non-player characters. <clears throat> Thank you. So, Michael's jumped us back into the editor so we can get a look at our captain behind the scenes. As you can see, we carefully optimize for both quality and efficiency. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs in UEFN with an average complexity hairstyle. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. You just save your custom metahumans in the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Rue metahuman preset. Once you have your creations saved in my metahumans, they'll be available to you in our new metahuman importer in UEFN. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Now, we can't talk about metahumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. There are many ways to author clothing, but in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3D, to integrate our metahuman body data into their software and provide a new USD export option for your garments. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Now on screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported from Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4, and from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming UE 5.4, we're introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data ingest, auto LOD generation, and auto skinning. 
In addition, you always have the option to take a more bespoke approach like we have here if you want more iterations and finer control. Okay, cloth physics are available in UEFN as early access starting today, and now we'd like to show you how easy it is to dress a metahuman character. Michael's going to demonstrate this for us live in the UEFN editor. All right, take it away, Michael. Thanks, Pat. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the default outfit that came in from metahuman creator. Next, we'll add a new uh, chaos cloth component. This allows us a place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, add a new animation so we can see how the cloth moves. Then we come down to the cloth, turn on Simulate, and just like that, we have moving cloth here inside UEFN. All right, cool. So from there, our metahuman is ready to be used in the game. And we're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. And you're not limited to clothing on characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. At last year's State of Unreal, you saw the power of metahuman animator in UE, and we're pleased to say that those same tools are now available to creators in UEFN. And don't forget, using our latest character device, you can also add a performance to some of your favorite Fortnite characters. You might have seen this in the recent Joke Night experience produced by Trevor Noah. For getting capture data into UEFN, we recommend using our new Live Link Hub application. This allows almost all capture devices that can stream to UE5 to also stream directly into UEFN and get recorded there. Even more third-party devices will be supported in Live Link Hub soon. What's next for the talisman is really up to you as creators. It's just one example of the many worlds that you might be dreaming of building for your next game. We've presented a workflow you can use to make compelling characters and a much clearer path for dynamic clothing. Really excited to see what comes next. Metahumans as NPCs and cloth physics are available in UEFN today, and the Talisman uh, environment is playable in our booth here at GDC. It'll be released as a template soon. We also have a tech talk here at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon that explores the techniques we use to create this project. Thank you. Sachs, turn things back over to you. Thank you both. Huge thank you to everyone who built the demo. And it, it's so awesome to see MetaHumans finally make their way to UEFN. And to celebrate that, we're starting next month. UEFN creators will get a one-year license to Marvelous Designer for free to clothe the digital humans in UEFN. <laughs> so we've talked about our new tools and plans for the future. And now we want to introduce a new initiative that we're embarking on with our partners at the LEGO Group. Starting today, you can create your own islands using LEGO elements, LEGO minifigs, and publish them directly to Fortnite's global audience. With this effort, the LEGO group is pioneering a brand new way to work with creators. To tell us much more, let's welcome Kai to the stage. Thank you, Sex. We are here today to share our vision for how we are expanding the future of digital play with game developers and fellow creators here at State of Unreal. In the last 90 years, the LEGO Group has gone from the simple, humble brick with massive possibilities to one of the world's most beloved brands. The LEGO brand brings out the kid in all of us. And today, you will see how we're democratizing powerful creative tools, continuously, seamlessly bridge the world of physical and digital play. We've already brought the magic of LEGO building into the Fortnite ecosystem with the survival crafting game, LEGO Fortnite. The game, built in UE, is continuing to expand its scale and creative possibilities. At the LEGO Group, we are beginning to integrate UE across our full portfolio of play experiences. UE is already being used to power LEGO in Ninjago, our iconic homegrown IP. This includes the physical packaging of LEGO sets, Legal, linear content like the new TV series, Dragons Rising, and marketing assets used to advertise the content. Seeing the power of UE, we had so many ideas for bringing diverse play experiences to audiences of all ages, and we couldn't wait to get our hands on UEFN. As a first step, we launched two new LEGO Islands in Fortnite. And today, we're announcing even more LEGO Islands available now. 
They're suitable for players of all ages, and you'll play using your favorite LEGO styles. Let's take a look. LEGO Prop Hunt builds on popular prop hunt mechanics to create whimsical LEGO fun for you and other players in a wacky shopping mall. LEGO Battle Arena enables you to become the next Benjitsu master, enroll in training at the LEGO Ninjago Dojo, compete against other trainees, and poop yourself. LEGO Cat Island Adventure is a playful game all about taking care of a friendly cat on an island. You need to complete tasks to keep your cat happy, and they'll let you know if they are not. These games introduce a brand new type of play in Fortnite, and something we hope all players will love. Keep an eye out for even more games coming soon, one about the wonders of space, and another that lets players complete challenges while flying. We hope everyone has such much fun playing these new LEGO Islands as we did making them. Check them out in Fortnite Discover today. Yeah, but the LEGO group won't be the only game builders creating LEGO Islands today. The next LEGO Islands will come from you. Today we're introducing a brand new set of tools that enable you to build your own LEGO Islands. When we announced our partnership with Epic, one of our key commitments was to enable players to unlock their potential as digital creators. It started with LEGO Fortnite, and it continues today. We are adding new LEGO templates so that you can bring the benefits of the LEGO system in play to life digitally. Building with LEGO elements in these templates is just the beginning, and my colleague Anas is here to tell you more. Thank you, Kai. I'm going to show you what you can do with these tools, and uh, let's dive in. The LEGO tools and templates are available in both UEFN and Fortnite Creative, so you can access them across all platforms. You can start building your own LEGO island by selecting one of the four custom templates. Let's begin with our colorful obstacle course, where you can traverse and explore the island filled with different platforming challenges. Home Builder is a lovely little neighborhood where Fortnite and LEGO homes coexist, and you have the possibility to build your own home or an entire village, and allowing you to leverage the proven Fortnite creative building system that has powered creative for years. We also have a template focused on musical experiences and experimentation using patchwork. And finally, we have a start island for those who prefer a blank canvas. We're also providing a huge library of LEGO assets to make your LEGO island unique. There are different prefabs to get you started, and galleries to flesh out the world, and much, much more for you to play with and customize your creation. You also have full creative freedom to move, adjust, add, or take away anything you want. And many creative devices are also available for, use, for you to use in your game. For example, you can place a movement modulator to launch your players into the sky. And at any point, you can switch to gameplay mode to see what players will experience and really get a feel for how much fun they'll have playing your game. You can enable your players to build, add LEGO elements or Fortnite props, or have fun with the sound effects and music. And also, take a look at these exciting LEGO weapons and items that your players will have available, including the explosive goo gun. But careful, it's super effective in breaking down your LEGO models. Once you're happy with your LEGO island, it's time to get it published. Use Creator Portal to publish your island directly to millions of Fortnite players to find through, discover, and play with their friends. You do need to be 18 to publish and monetize in Fortnite, and LEGO Islands needs to be suitable for a 10-plus audience. With these LEGO tools, Epic and the LEGO Group will enable you to build a whole host of new LEGO experiences with endless possibilities for everyone to enjoy. It's a new era for creativity, with LEGO elements in a digital setting like never before, and we believe Fortnite is a place where your imagination can run wild. Please stop by the UFN kiosk on the GDC floor, or hop into Fortnite today to take a spin with these templates. And be sure to join us live at the LEGO Creator Talk later today to get a deeper dive on these new tools. And the tools and the templates are just the beginning. 
And it's exciting for us to see the joy of building and pride of creation that players and creators around the world already know and love, brought to life through this amazing suite of digital tools. Just open UEFN or Fortnite Creative to get started. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thomas and Kai. This initiative enables you to develop legitimate commercial games using world-class IP without getting lost in contracts and negotiations. With a single agreement and a predetermined engagement payout share to the IP owner, you can make the game you've always dreamt of. This is another view into how we see the future of our gaming platform supporting, supporting both creativity and IP rights. Let's end the era of cheap knockoffs and instead facilitate IP-based games that we can all be happy with and proud of. That's everything we're announcing today. As we work to build the open metaverse, having partners to share a vision is critical. For two years, we've been on this journey with the LEGO Group, and we recently announced a multi-year project with Disney to collaborate on an all-new games and entertainment universe connecting, connected straight to Fortnite. We're thrilled, we're thrilled to be working with them and so many others to bring this vision to life. For the vision to become reality, we need all kinds of experiences from AAA studios, indie developers, to creators who are just getting started. Everything we shared on stage today, from UE 5.4 to Fortnite creator tools to the mind-blowing demos from our partners, is bringing us much closer to this goal. And we hope you're as excited as we are about everything our teams across Epic are working on. Come later for our tech talks here in the Moscone, visit our teams in our booth. You are pushing the boundaries of what's possible in game development, and you are pushing us to do better. Thank you. <laughs>